Hello, it's Deacon and Sarah again. Today, we are going to talk about something that I'm sure all of you have experienced or understand. Here's my question. Have you ever been sick? I bet you're all nodding yes or raising your hand yes. I've been sick. I was sick when I was a little kid. I've even been sick as a grown-up. It's not fun. You're tired all the time. You are hot and then you're cold. You don't have energy to go to school. You don't have energy to play. All you feel like you can do is sleep. And even that seems hard. Can you relate? Can you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, being sick is not fun. It's not anything I like to do. I like to be healthy and active and play and work. But I know that sickness is a real thing. People get sick. You get sick. I get sick. Sometimes it takes a long time to get better. So what does being sick have to do with a Bible lesson? Well, in the Bible, remember, God's word, they talk about being sick, about being weak. Now, there are certainly instances when the word sick is used the way we understand it, right? I have a fever, my nose is running, my throat hurts, my tummy hurts. Sure, that's all being sick. However, the Bible also teaches a different meaning of sickness. And this sickness actually leads to death. So let me explain what that means. In the Bible, the word sickness or being sick can also talk about or point us to the problem of sin. Have you heard of that word before, sin? Sin is everything we do that we shouldn't, or all those times we were supposed to do something and we didn't. I'll give you an example. Maybe your mom said only one cookie after dinner, but when she wasn't looking, you took a second one. That's a sin. Or maybe your brother and you were fighting over a toy and you pushed him to grab it. That was a sin. But then when your mom came and asked you about it, you lied and just said that he fell over. Another sin. Or perhaps mom asked you to put away the groceries. That's your job, to put away all the groceries. But instead, you just run in the backyard and go play and mom's left with all the groceries in the kitchen by herself. Also a sin. Maybe you can think of a time that you did one of those things or you did something like it because those aren't the only ones. Those are just a few examples. And even if you're sitting there thinking, well, I've never done any of that. Ha ha, I don't have that problem. But you do. Because here's the thing. The Bible talks about sin being something that's inside of us from the moment we're growing in our mom's tummy. Yeah, we just are. We're sinful. The Bible uses the word weak. This is kind of a bummer of a lesson so far. I have sin, even if I'm trying to not do any of those bad things. Now I have it inside of me already? Well, good grief. That's no good. What do I do? Well, remember, God's word always tells the truth. And the truth about us is we're sinful. That's, that's just it. However, God doesn't leave us in our sin. He had a plan the first moment sin entered the world to take it away and save us. 
So let's read from the Bible. I'm in the book of Romans. Last week we were in the book of Genesis. This week we are jumping to a different book. We're in the book of Romans. So it says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Oh, we could stop right there. Think about that. Weak, sick, sin. But then wait a minute. Who died for us? Christ. Jesus. That's right. We can remember the cross. We can remember that God provided a solution. It says, for if while we were enemies, ugh, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. So let's talk about that. The truth is we're sinful. Even if you're going to sit there and tell me you've never done anything mean or wrong, the truth is sin's inside of you anyway. You literally came out of your mom's tummy already a sinner. That's what the Bible says and that's true. But we're not stuck in that sin. We're not without a solution. God sent his son, Jesus, who had no sin, not even one wrong thing. God sent his son, Jesus, his perfect son to the cross to pay for our sins. Why? So God can be up there taking notes. Oh, that deacon is Sarah. She's not doing the right thing. I think I'm going to kick her out. Nope. God did it because he loves us. He loves you. He loves me. He sent Jesus out of love. And that means that our sickness, our sin, our weakness is washed away. Now, this can be tricky to understand, right? Because on the one hand, yes, that's right. I'm forgiven. God loves me. Awesome. But on the other hand, why do I keep doing wrong things? Why do I keep sinning? Well, that is something that every Christian struggles with. Remember, a Christian is, is the word for someone who believes in Jesus, who's part of God's family. We know we're forgiven and we're loved, and we have the opportunity to share that with people around us. But we still struggle with sin because this world is broken, and we still have that sin inside of us. There's always that tug, that pull. And until we go to heaven, we'll still always have that tug and pull. But God does not have a limit on his forgiveness. That means the next time you do something wrong, the next time you are sick in your body or sick in your choices, sinful, you can talk to him. You know, a few weeks ago we talked about prayer, right? You can tell him, I did it again. I pushed my brother and I didn't want to, but then I kind of did and then I did it. <sighs> Forgive me, Lord. And do you know what his answer is? Do you know what it's always going to be when we talk to him? Yes, I forgive you. Your sins are covered. Jesus loves you. And that is a great, wonderful message that we can take when we're feeling upset or worried but we can also share with people around us. God loves you. He's forgiven you. Take that into your week. All right, we're done for today. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.